We're counting down 10 of the most popular board games as of March 2018. Will this list help you find some new games that you didn't know about yet? Well, let's start this month's countdown and find out. Hey, I'm Chaz from Pair of Dice Paradise, and welcome to this month's list, which is based on the top 10 board games that have been getting the most buzz over on BoardGameGeek.com's hottest games list over the past 30 days. These are the games that are generating the most traffic and discussion on that website. And which games have captured people's attention this month? Well, let's start the countdown and find out. Dropping a little bit, but still on the list at number 10 this month is Kingdom Death Monster, a horror fantasy RPG set in a unique nightmarish world devoid of most natural resources, where players will encounter monsters as they develop their settlement and fight to survive. This is a big game with lots of moving parts to track. And that's why this 3D printed gear grid on Thingiverse caught my eye this month while I was putting together this list. As per the designer's notes, this implements enough space for all of a character's gear cards and nullifies the need for tracking armor values on your survivor sheets. It also helps track character injuries, including their locations and their severities. Light and heavy injuries can be recorded as well via the tokens that you'll place on the different hit locations. If you're interested in more information about this 3D printed gear grid for Kingdom Death Monster, I'll include a link in this video's description to more information about it. Rising up from spot 24 up to 9 this month is newcomer to our countdown, Batman Gotham City Chronicles. Batman Gotham City Chronicles is a one against many game in which one player will select a villain to play and then will face off against a team of heroes over the course of multiple scenarios. But the villain, while playing solo, is not alone because they will have access to a team of different henchmen at their disposal. Batman Gotham City Chronicles is being developed by Monolith, the same publisher that developed a game based on Conan the Barbarian a few years ago. The gameplay in Batman Gotham City Chronicles is based on that of Conan, but introduces revised character abilities, two new types of dice, and a new two-player versus mode. And if this game sounds interesting to you, head on over to Kickstarter to back it. And do it soon, because Monolith has stated that this game is going to be sold exclusively through its Kickstarter campaign. So when it's done, it's gone. This month's biggest climber, leaping all the way from 71 up to spot number 8, is Stuffed Fables by Plaid Hat Games. In Stuffed Fables, players take on the role of heroic stuffed animals seeking to save the child that they love from a scheming, evil mastermind. Forget giant lasers or like a diamond mine or whatever, this evil mastermind scheme focuses on a child for some reason. but. Regardless, the game's narrative is driven by the choices that the players will make during the course of the game. The chapters of Stuff Fables explore many milestones of a child's life. And when I say chapters, I do mean chapters. Because Stuffed Fables is the first in a series of what they're calling adventure book games, in which the action takes place on a literal storybook, which acts as the rules reference, story guide, and game board all together in one. Each adventure spans several pages of an adventure book, which opens flat to lay on the table during the game. The desired result for this approach is a branching, overarching story that's accessible enough for young players while still being rewarding enough for older ones. So if you're scheming for a good adventure game, you may want to give Stuffed Fables a look. Hey. As always, I just wanted to take a moment during this countdown to say thank you to everyone watching because videos like this are made possible by viewers like you who are helping fund Pair of Dice Paradise's 2018 season. Check the description for a link if, if you'd like to support the channel. And you know, whether you financially support Pair of Dice Paradise or just click the subscribe button, it's all appreciated and it all goes to help create more videos just like this one. So thank you. But for now, let's continue on with the countdown. In spot number 7 this month is Arkham Horror The Card Game. The success of this Cthulhu adventure card game has kept it on our countdown month after month after month. And, as with any successful product, variations and spin-offs are 
gonna be inevitable. And that's why I was intrigued, but not, not really completely surprised, when Fantasy Flight Games announced the upcoming release of The Deep Gate, a new novella by Chris A. Jackson, which takes place in the Arkham Horror universe. But this book's not just for reading, because it also includes four new cards for Arkham Horror, Arkham, Arkham Horror, the Cord Gorm. Arkham Horror, the card game. There we go. So, if you'd like to delve even deeper into Arkham's otherworldly horrors, and pick up a few additional cards for your game while you're at it, you may want to check out this novella, The Deep Gate, which is available for pre-order as of the time of this recording. Coming in at number six this month is the engine building game set in an alternate 1920s branching off historical timeline, Scythe. The gamers have been thoroughly enjoying gathering around the table to play this game for several years now, and soon they'll be able to enjoy it on Steam as well. Scythe is already available on the digital gaming platform Tabletopia, but earlier this year, Scythe's publisher, Stonemaier Games, licensed the digital rights for Scythe to Asmodee Digital and the Knights of Unity development team. At this very moment, as I am recording the words coming out of my mouth right now, the closest thing that we have to an estimated release date for Scythe on Steam is quote unquote, soon. So hopefully we'll find out more about a specific release date soon. And when that information does become available, I'll be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Maintaining its spot in the middle of our countdown for a second month in a row is Gaia Project at spot number five. This game is heavy, and I'm not just referring to its rules or mechanisms. I mean, this game weighs in at like six and a half pounds. There's a 147 plastic structures and over 300 plastic pieces in this box. It's hefty. And as with so many games that have so many bits, it often helps to have a little bit of assistance tracking and organizing those bits when, when you play. Well, a German website, Fantasy Welt, has introduced their own Blackfire organizer, specifically designed as an overlay for the Gaia Project player boards. Now, the majority of their website is in German, but if you are interested in these Gaia Project player overlays, well, I'll add a link to more information about them in this video's description. Returning to our countdown in spot number four, after several months away, is Spirit Island by Greater Than Games. Greater Than Games recently reached out and provided me with several interesting tidbits of trivia about this game's design and development, so here's a couple of them. First of all, they say that a fair number of people have contacted them wondering what the fear markers are supposed to represent. Three common guesses being a skull and crossbones, a panda bear, and a turtle. But, they say, if you take a look at the spirit illustration for Bringer of Dreams and Nightmares, well, then you may notice some similarity in their shapes. Additionally, there were several more spirit types that were playtested during the game's development, but had to be cut and didn't make it into the final publication for one reason or another. However, there are still oblique references to a number of those spirits in one of the Branch and Claw scenarios. Now, for this part, I can't speak directly for greater than games, but I can't help but wonder that if you can figure out what these additional spirit types might be, if it might give a clue to what we may be seeing in an upcoming expansion. Earlier in the countdown, we discussed how Scythe would soon be coming to the online gaming platform Steam. Well, Scythe isn't the only board game in this month's countdown that will soon be making the jump to that digital platform. The game in spot number three this month, Terraforming Mars, will also soon be launching a Steam version. Current estimates are that this digital version of the game, to be published by Asmodee Digital and developed by Lucky Hammer Studios, will be releasing in the second quarter of 2018. And all this talk about converting board games over to Steam brings me to the big question for this month's episode. Do you think that digital implementations of analog games are a good thing? or a bad thing for the board game industry. Will these digital versions cannibalize the sales of the physical product, or will it actually help to spread awareness and thereby increase board game sales? In the comments, let me know how you think Steam is impacting the board game hobby and why. 
Making its debut in our top 10 in spot number two is Rising Sun by Simon Games. Rising Sun was a phenomenal success on Kickstarter, raising $4.2 million. Even people who only back a couple Kickstarters a year gave in and backed it. Rising Sun is being called a spiritual successor to Blood Rage. It's made by the same designer, has the same artist, the same studio developed it, and it has the same sculptors for all of its minis. But whereas Blood Rage could theoretically trace its ancestry all the way back to a game like Risk, Rising Sun's lineage would branch off, leading more towards a game like Diplomacy as its distant ancestor. In the game, players must master diplomatic negotiations, form and break alliances, and conduct warfare when the time comes. And now, after funding on Kickstarter over a year ago, Rising Sun's time on our countdown has finally come. But how long will it last? Well, we'll find out the answer to that as the year progresses. And finally, setting a new record by being Board Game Geek's hottest game for a fifth month in a row is returning favorite, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven is a game of Euro-inspired tactical combat in a persistent world of shifting motives with elements of a legacy game sprinkled in. And as with most legacy games, that's gonna mean each copy of the game becomes a unique universe as cards, boards, and rules are changed, usually by the application of stickers. And you know, if it's one thing about stickers, they're sticky, meaning that the changes that you make with them are usually permanent. And in an effort to provide a, a little more longevity to your copy of Gloomhaven, the company of Sinister Fish has started publishing a set of removable stickers designed specifically to be compatible with Gloomhaven. This pack of vinyl stickers contains a replacement for every single map, achievement, and enhancement sticker in the core game, and also includes replacement seals for character boxes, secret envelopes, and the town records book. The stickers are designed so that they can be cleanly removed without tearing or leaving any of that sticky little sticker residue stuff behind, helping players to reset the campaign aspects of the game for fresh playthroughs and replayability. And the publisher claims that, with care, these stickers can be used several times. Now, Gloomhaven is already a massive game, and this sticker set strives to make that massive game even more massive and replayable. And there you go, your list of the top 10 most popular board games as of March 2018. And for more top 10 countdowns, be sure to check out this playlist that's just chock full of them. And for more board game videos full of board game news, reviews, and commentary, be sure to subscribe and check out the other Pair of Dice Paradise videos. Until then, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise. Thanks, and take care. In the game, players must master diplomatic negotiations, form and break alliances, and conduct where, 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 War, Worf, Worf is playing this game. It's on the bridge. They played it on Star Trek. What episode was it? In episode season two of Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm going to go home.